I find I learn a lot about God through prayer, a lot about who he is, his nature, um, his heart, um, and I learn, um, it's actually one of the primary ways that I've grown the prophetic gift in my life um, because our prayers need to be an echo of what's happening in heaven, yeah? Um, although it does work that you can pray God's will generally and when it aligns with his heart, um, things happen. So you don't always need to be hearing prophetically. But I find for me, prayer works best when I've heard what is happening, the specific things uh, that are happening. Um, and I echo back. Our prayers are an echo of what God is doing in heaven first. Um, and so in that sense, our prayers are great. I do want to talk to you about um, something that has kind of come across my radar a few times from people with regard to specifically this opportunity that we're looking at as a, a church with regard to this partnership opportunity that uh, is both exciting and terrifying at the same time. So, uh, potentially the biggest thing if we say yes to this as a congregation that New Life will have ever done. And one of the key things that I'm hearing back from people is, hey, this sounds awesome in lots of ways, but how do we know that this is what God is saying to us to do? And, um, and so today I wanna speak to you about the subject of guidance. Okay, and I want to give you some pointers, not just in this area, but in general, uh, that uh, are helpful things that you can take away. That's um, not just about this decision, but in your relationship with God, um, that will inform how God guides us. Because the, the Bible is full of examples and, and full of promises that God will guide his people. Um, and that's a good thing. In um, Psalm 25, verse 9, it says, God guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. And in Psalm 20, uh, sorry, 32, verse 8, God says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. Um, and... Um, Specifically, we see this being played out in various Bible stories, um, both old and new. And I'm, I'm sure you can think of many examples in the Bible that spring to mind as I say that statement. And uh, for example, the Exodus story, there, there was a generation of people that were led of the Lord every day. Um, the, they had this um, cloud of God, the glory cloud of some kind, which they called the pillar of cloud that was there with them by day and then by night, it was there as a flame of fire. And depending on whether or not this cloud or fire moved, Israel had to follow them. They were guided by this glory of God that was present in their midst. Um, and a whole generation were led this way for 40 years. Um, and then in addition to that, there are um, stories as well of the people of God in the Old Testament. They, the, the, the priest had this breastplate and there was this special contraption on the front of the best breastplate where there was, and I can't say these words, the Urim and Thurman. Is that how you say it? This, these stones or wood, the people don't know exactly what they were, but there was this little pouch that they kept this, and it was almost like these divine dice. And when the people of Israel wanted to hear what God had to say about them, they would get the Urim and Thurman and throw it on the ground. And depending on how it laid, they were like, well, God is saying this or he's doing that. Um, and they were led of the Lord by these key decisions um, throughout the, the history of Israel. Um, and then in the New Testament, things amp up uh, considerably that there are so many stories of the people of God being led by the Lord in so many different ways from the Magi uh, or the, uh, yeah, the Magi, the, the wise men, that they were led by a star that they had been told about many hundreds of years previously to look out for. And when this thing showed up um, and moved, that that would be God leading them 
to the place where the Messiah would be born. And so they followed this star appearance, um, and sure enough, they come across Jesus. They were guided by the Lord. Um, and then, um, in addition to that, Joseph and Mary, we, we see in the story of Jesus, that Joseph and Mary um, were led of the Lord. That when Herod finds out that the Jewish king had been born, um, God shows up in, in a dream to Joseph and he says, hey Joseph, you need to pack your bags and head to Egypt for a while. I need to take you off the scene here because this king is gonna try and kill Jesus. So Joseph is guided by the Lord and he leaves um, Israel and he goes to live in Egypt. And um, some people think he was there three years, but after whatever time it was, there, he has another dream in which God says, hey, Herod's dead, it's safe to go home again. And so he's gu uh, guided by the Lord through a dream. Um, and then um, in, Acts, um, in Acts, there are many, many uh, uh, um, stories of people being led of the Lord. Philip, the evangelist, who's one of the kind of disciples, he was led to a specific location where he has this divine uh, setup with an Ethiopian, um, and he feels the spirit of the Lord telling him, hey, uh, Philip, why don't you go and kind of walk alongside the, the chariot as the, the uh, as going along the Lord, uh, going along the road? And he does. He's kind of walking fast to keep. Uh, you can imagine doing the power walking thing, uh, and he's listening into what's happening. And the Ethiopian leader who's on this chariot is reading part of the scripture. And there's this divine encounter, and he, he leads the Ethiopian into a living relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ through being guided by the Holy Spirit. And, and, and then um, the apostle Paul, or Saul, uh, when he becomes a believer, he has this Damascus Road experience in which the glory of the Lord shows up, and Jesus begins to talk to him, and he's like, whoa, my eyes are hurting, who's that? And he said, ah, it's Jesus, and it's like, You've been trying to persecute me, uh, my people and you've been kicking against the goats and he becomes a born again believer on the street. But then a believer is told about Saul becoming a born again believer and um, he is directed to go to a specific location where Paul is now and he baptizes him in the Holy Spirit and introduces him to the people of God. And so um, this person is guided by the Holy Spirit really specifically to a specific street address to actually have this uh, encounter with, with Paul who's just become a brand new believer through this supernatural occurrence. Um, and then um, the church of Antioch in Acts chapter um, 13 are directed to set aside Paul and Barnabas for a specific mission that, they, that the, the Holy Spirit is highlighting them to do. And the, the body of Christ or the leaders within the body of Christ discern that this is the will of God and they guide the church or the Spirit of God guides the church to, to send out Paul and Barnabas as apostles for the kingdom and they, they have this ama amazing missionary journey uh, as a result of this. And so the scripture is full of stories of where God himself guides the people of God. And, and that's a good news for us uh, because God is a guiding God. Um, and um, in my own life, I can reference many occasions where I've experienced God's guidance in my life. Um, for example, when I, um, when I was called to be a full-time Christian leader, I was in a church service in London in 1999, and we're worshiping the Lord. And during worship, it was beautiful worship time, much like this morning, and the presence of God is there, and I'm just loving on Jesus and worshiping him. And I hear the internal audible voice of God speak to me and said, hey, Maddie, I've called you to be a shepherd for me and I'm calling you into full-time Christian ministry and you need to go through a period of training, not just for you, but for your family. Um, and he began to describe kind of specific things that were necessary for me to be called. 
Um, and then later on, um, as a, uh, by this time, a full-time Christian leader, there were countless instances where I can actually say, God led me here and he led me there. And um, he even led Jody and I out of the church we were leading in, in New Zealand and he led us to Bethel. And on the same weekend, Jody and I were praying about what God would have us do. And we both heard God say, uh, he was calling us to go to this place that we had very little um, knowledge of, but independently God spoke to us and confirmed his guidance for us in our lives. And so we ended up going to, to this place in uh, Redding, California for two years. Um, and God blessed us there. And then out of there, God spoke to my wife, Jody, and then later me that he was calling us back to the UK. Um, and he also spoke to our kids over that time as to what he would have us do. And our kids heard the actual location in London we were to be ministering in. Um, and they had had this, uh, like one of my kids had this song on their heart um, that they couldn't get out of their heart. Um, and it had to do with this kid's song, Zulane, 52, 52, Zulane. And it was a word of the Lord for them. And we ended up being near Regent's um, Park and London Zoo. And that's where God was basing us. And, and they, the Lord even gave the name of the church to one of my kids that we planted in central London, Open Heavens Church. And so we have these references from my own life, or I do, of where God was very specifically guiding me. <laughs> I wish I could tell you that I was a grand master at God's guidance. Um, I wish I could tell you that there was an ABC that you can follow in being led by God. Even though I've got countless biblical testimony of the fact that God guides us and I have numerous occasions in my own life where I can reference that God has led me. But I have to say, it's probably one of the hardest areas in the Christian life, um, which I hope will give many of you comfort. Because I think for many people, they know what I've just referenced, that God is a guiding God, but they also experience in their own life confusion and uncertainty in the area of guidance. You're not alone. I want to share some stuff that will be hopefully helpful you, for you in this uh, area of guidance and being guided by the Lord. Um, I, I think one of the common things God does is, and we see this in Scripture, and I've referenced some of these things already, that God tends to speak very clearly about what seems to be mission-critical things. That there are moments in um, our lives where the decisions that we make will hinge on the very future of um, our life and the orientation of our life. And I can think back to one of those uh, periods in my life where we had just moved to New Zealand in um, two, uh, the year 2000 and we had planted ourselves there and I was working within the commercial world um, and I was actually pretty good at what I did back then and I was earmarked for uh, greatness within the organization that I was actually a part, part of and I knew that in, in my life and, and so we arrived in New Zealand and shortly after this I got a job offer from this company that I was working for to go to Australia, Sydney, Australia of all places. Um, and we were offered this mobile position, which would have essentially set me and the family up to be uh, carefree financially for the rest of our lives. Our kids would have had private, um, pr private education in some of the best schools around the world um, and also uh, health care. We would have been taken care of because the mobile uh, managers of this organization just live this incredible lifestyle. And I was invited into the inner circle, but I, with regards to where God would have us work out this call in our lives. And in, um, 
A, a few years after working in industry, we were sensing from the Lord, both Jody and I, that now was the time that he was now calling us into full-time Christian ministry. And somehow, and I can't remember how we arrived at this decision, um, but we had felt that because the Lord had given me this call to full-time Christian ministry whilst we were living in the UK, that he wanted us back there. And, and we were living in New Zealand at the time. And so uh, being faithful to the call of God and the now aspect of this is the time to get trained aspect, we decided to head back to the UK. And so I wrote my resignation to the company that I was working for at the time.